Today, we are going to be talking about Reef. Now, Reef is a cryptocurrency that is a liquidity aggregator and it has recently come to a lot of attention of the, the younger generation of investors, I'd say, because KSI uh, in the last few months has pushed Reef a lot. It's a relatively new sort of cryptocurrency and they work, as they say here, the, the DeFi through liquidity and protocol aggregation, proprietary analytics and multi-chain accessibility. So they're on Binance, which is a very big exchange and their market cap currently sits at $500 million. So you can see how Reef kind of Guess liquidity from everywhere, centralized exchanges and decentralized exchanges, as you can see here, and kind of allows you to, to trade that as a liquidity aggregator. So this reminds me very much of Orion Protocol. We reviewed them recently, uh, where they're once again a, a liquidity aggregator. They're similar sort of areas, Reef and Orion, I guess, um, because Orion does the same thing. And funny enough, they both sit around the same market cap. So again, back to Reef, they're powered by Polkadot. I think they're working with quite a few different cryptocurrencies in order to reduce these sort of expensive gas fees and the high like commissions when you're making trades and stuff like that. They're trying to reduce the complexity of a lot of trades and they're trying to make the liquidity stable and include the liquidity, they kind of solve the liquidity problem, I guess, in that sense. And we can take a look at their roadmap. We can see that in 2020 uh, and 2021, they've got a lot of things to do because they are relatively a, um, a fairly newish cryptocurrency. So you can see that, where are we now? We're in Q2 approaching of 2021. And you can see that they're looking at the smart asset management, reef basket, pooling mechanism, palm support, moonbeam support. And there's a lot of stuff they have left to do in terms of their roadmap. You know, it's a very busy roadmap and they're, they're getting a lot done every single day. So they built their roadmap on Notion. I do love Notion a lot. So we can see we've got a much more detailed look at this. So if we click on it, you can cannot see anything too much more detail, okay. You can see that they are working with the NFT baskets uh, for 2021 Q3. They're kind of integrating NFTs, which every cryptocurrency is into their reef site, uh, just like Orion did. Obviously, a big plus is that they're, you know, the center of their work is involved in DeFi, decentralized finance. I think blockchain is optimized for finance and the decentralization of it is obviously such a big thing right now. It's such a big pump. Um, every DeFi token and coin has pushed up massively in the last few months. So that is a quick overview of Reef. Now, recently I was a holder of Reef. However, about two days ago, I sold my Reef position uh, to get into LTO, a token that we're gonna review very soon. Let me know if you like that token. And uh, obviously I also had a similar token in terms of Orion Protocol. So a very key rule of investing is that, that diversification reduces your risk, whether it be divers diversification in sector, company, uh, crypto and stocks. Diversification as a rule helps reduce your risk. So I decided that I was quite heavy in Orion and I had some in Reef, but I, I needed to free up some capital to put in LTO. So I decided to diversify away from the liquidity aggregator sector. But anyway, a recent drama that occurred with Reef, they was trading at I think 0 0.5 cents um, and then they went down. Let's just take a quick look at when this happened. So if we go on their three month chart, you can see that they was trading at about 0 0.055 cents and then they had a bit of a downward spiral here because a bit of beef with Alamander and then the, when the markets took blood, they fell even further. So essentially heading back over to the Reef news, we can see that there was a token deal drama between Alamander and Reef and basically I've only seen the Reef CEO statement but Alamander were meant to make a, a, a 20 million investment and supposedly before they even agreed the full on terms, Alamander said that they approached Reef about the investment and before anything, Reef were already touting it to the press and saying, oh look, we got this investment and uh, artificially inflating the, in, inflation, inflating the price essentially. Um, and then Reef came back with a statement from the CEO saying that basically that's not what happened. We agreed an investment with Alamander Research, Alamanda Re Alameda Research, and we, we started giving them over the coins. They've been a long-term partner, so we, you know, they put proof of giving over, you know, something like six million reef coins or even more than that. And then what Alameda did, they dumped them straight onto Binance. Um, and obviously we gave them, them at a discount because they're our long-term partners and we've known them for so many years. And we gave them so, like loads of coins. They dumped them straight onto the market, dump, made the price dump and so on and so on. So there was a bit of a back and forth beef between, between both of them. But I think the market obviously took the side of um, Alameda when it went down to 0 0.38 and then it kind of pumped back up a bit I think when Reef put out their statement and then the market started to bleed and it went down to 0 0.032 and then recently it's pumped back all the way up again to 0 0.045 at highs. So my story with Reef is that I didn't get out after this pump, I stayed in, I rode it back up to about 0 0.042, I then sold, then I waited for a dip, got back in at 0 0.034 
and then rode it back up to about 0.38, then sold again recently, as I was saying, sold my reef to get into LTO. And then sadly, it went on like a 15, 16% rise just after I sold it the day after. But equally, I put my, my money into LTO, which also pumped. Now, I should be noted that I am no financial advisor. Anything I say or do in this video should not be taken as financial advice. I'm not offering advice. Please do not make any investment decisions based on what I say. And please do your own research and read the full disclaimer. So taking a look at the reef price, we can see that currently it's 0.045. Their trading volume is up 80% to $168 million. Being up 80% in terms of your trading volume is very good. The market is obviously expecting something. You know, it's very volatile at the moment. High liquidity, very good. The market cap is almost, again, as I was saying, up to 500 million, much the same as Reef, uh, much the same as Orion. Um, Reef is at 500 million. I think it's, you know, clearly there's a lot of, a lot of hope and room for growth for Reef, which is priced into the market cap. They are a very new coin. We can go on all time. We can see that they've only been really trading since December 2020. And to have a market cap of 500 million already, in my opinion, is, is wow. They've just come straight in, boom. Obviously, there would have been private sales and other stuff going on before they hit the main market. But I'm sure that there's going to be a bit, I reckon there's going to be a bit of backlash for Reef on bad, but majority probably feel good. Oh, 92% feel good, as we always say everyone feels good. If you're looking to buy Reef, obviously Binance is the place to buy Reef here. You can see that there's top market, top source, highest volume. Um, and my Binance will be linked down in the description below and you can get 5% off of your trading fees if you sign up using my link. So you can see here all the drama once again surrounding Reef. We're going to take a look at their technical chart right now, but you know, they kind of solved the problems the, 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 they're looking to solve the problems of the market and make it easier to trade and reduce fees and all stuff like that, which is a very essential part of, of revolu revolutionizing the crypto markets. Just look at how brokers like Trading212, Free Trade, now that there's no commission, have really taken off because they're able to beat long term historical brokers like Halifax who charge fees, etc. Two month chart, you can kind of see the massive rise from even from Jan the 13th when there's 0 0.007 up until where they almost really about nine, eight, nine folded when there was 0 0.0569 at their peak. So taking a closer look at the recent moves, if we head down over here to, let's just say we're gonna go over to about the 10 day mark. So what's the date today? Yeah, but we're gonna go a bit closer. We'll go start from here. So we can see that when they peaked, which we're gonna draw in a trend line here, the actual Alamander scandal, I'd say on average probably caused them to drop down to about this level right here. Um, we're going to leave that line as green. We're going to get in an angle tool here just to see what the angle was. You know, we often expect about a 40 degrees movement in, in crypto. That seems to be the common, common factor. But obviously the drop here was so steep relative to the, the time period because obviously Alamanda dropped the bombshell, people panic sold, reef collapsed. So this, this angle of a drop on the time of the 15th of March uh, amongst the Alamanda scandal was much, much steeper than the off the drops we normally see in terms of crypto, which seem to hover like harmony and stuff like that, hover around a 40 degree angle. But obviously when the markets then subsequently bled, um, because Reef had arguably already overbled from this scandal, you can see the kind of the angle at which they, they bled um, at that point was probably, I'd say about 25 or 30, 36, which is fairly standard for crypto, I'd say. I mean, my portfolio itself, I think everyone's portfolio probably went down on average by about 20%. So, you know, that's that's roughly in line with the market. And then since then, we can see they've been kind of gaining pace along with the market again, all the way up to 0 0.04 from 0 0.03, which is about 25% gain, you know, it's serious gains. Um, so that's that's roughly what we can see at the mar on the uh, market right now. Yeah, so when we look for a kind of trend, there is no real trend as such. It's been too volatile to look for any triple bottom or any falling wedge. I think, so you can see the reef is approaching levels above where it was before the market bled, when the whole market was down, and it's still yet to reach its peak of, you know, when when the market was really pumping reef up until it's put, uh, beef with Alamander. So we can see that heading over to reef's all-time high, their all-time high was just before the Alamander scandal, and again, uh, let's get this crosshair tool up here so we can just kind of see a bit easier. And you can see that they've kind of hit levels close to their peak before, back in the start of Feb, before crashing down to 0 0.027. 
And then this time when they hit, the, they hit a new all-time high peak, they then crash down to levels of 0.03. So it seems to be like a slow, slow upward trend there. Remember, a slow upward trend here, that sort of thing. Um, but remember, guys, I'm no financial advisor. So anything I say or do in this video is not valid. I'm not a technical analyst. I'm not a professional analyst. You know, the technical stuff I do is very, very weak. So yeah, I think the next all-time high for refinance when it comes, if it ever comes, will be pushing around the 0.62 mark, as you can kind of see by this sort of this sort of green line here, um, judging from their previous their previous encounter with the all-time high and then pullback and then all-time high. And overall, my opinion is on Reef that I think uh, I would like to hold personally either Reef or Orion just so I have one foot in the liquidity aggregator sector of the markets because obviously going forward, they have a lot of scope to grow along with the markets. I guess it just depends. Almost Reef and Orion are in competition. I guess it depends kind of can they work together or is it going to be, you know, one of them succeeds massively, one of them fails. And I think that in the whole Alamanda debacle, I take the side of, well, it's great that they was considering investing 20 million in Reef in the first place, even considering it they must have something going on but then also it's a bit dodgy that you know it fall how how can such a big deal fall out so easily um there's a lot of controversy around the reef telegram and reddit where maybe people are uh, uh posts are getting deleted when they're calling reef out for negative negative stuff they're doing behind the scenes that's what my friend owen told me he's very clued up at reddit and stuff like that but obviously it could be you know scandals of other companies and cryptos trying to haunt stuff you know you never quite know it's good to know what's going on but I think you can never read too much into it because there's always bias and hidden agendas and all stuff like this. So I think that the concept behind Reef is great. I want to have a, a foothold in the liquidity aggregator sector. I don't know for sure what is going to happen in the future, but I would imagine as the market continues to grow, if the market does continue to grow, Reef will also grow. And I guess it will grow at a similar level to, or to Orion Protocol. So thank you for watching today. Like and subscribe. Catch you again soon.